Okay. So now what we are going to see is, guys, we are going to see that just like these, okay, just like the, these chromatin fibers, there are going to be 46 different chromatin fibers, okay? Now, let's see, we are talking about only one of this, okay? For the time being, we are talking only about the red one. Now, even in this red one, see, we are going to have that, oh, this chromatin fiber is going to have DNA, okay? Because it is going to be made up of your DNA plus it is going to have histones, plus it is going to have your non-histone proteins. Okay, so it is going to have a combination of that. Okay, but now what is going to happen, you know, guys, understand. Okay, plus there are going to be non-histone proteins as well. Okay, now this entire DNA what is out over here, it is not going to be important for you. Why? Because you are going to see that only certain portions of it is going to be really, really important. And that is going to be like, you know, coding for certain proteins. So let's say we have only this, only this part. Okay, this part, let's say it is coding for the color of your eye. So this part, what is this? This small portion of your DNA this is called as your genes so what is a gene a gene is nothing but it is a sequence of nucleotides okay once again remember it is nothing but a sequence of nucleotides okay on the dna which encodes for a particular protein which manifests itself in the form of some character or feature in the body meaning this gene has to do something or the other so let's say this was for your eye color Let's say there is another sequence of nucleotides. This is for your skin color. Let's say there is another sequence of your uh, nucleotides. This is, let's say, for your uh, gait or let's say for your walk. Okay, so let's imagine it is going to be something of that sort. Okay, so this is what we talk about your genes. So genes are small segments of the DNA. But now when we talk about genome, okay, what is genome? Genome is going to be, see, I have this on one uh, of the DNA, uh, one of the chromatin fiber like this. I told you we are going to have 46 chromatin fibers. Now, if I consider the genes from all the 46 chromosomes, if I consider the genes from all the 46 chromosomes, guys, then that is called as genome. Genome is nothing but the entire complement of DNA. Okay, it is going to be entire complement of DNA, which includes the uh, the useful part also and the non-useful part also. So everything on the 46 chromosomes, that is going to be your genome. Okay, understood the difference, guys? Sure? No issues? Okay, okay. Okay, so always remember, okay, whenever we talk about genome, genome is very huge. Genome means it is very, very, very huge. Okay, it has to include the all the 46 chromosomes and the DNA and the genes present on all of them. Whereas when we talk about gene, gene is going to be only one small segment. Okay. What are histones? Histones are going to be those proteins which help in the packaging of the DNA. And okay, we are going to see it today what exactly is going to happen because see, we have spoken of, uh, you know, your prophase. Okay, and prophase, we had said that, oh, in the second part, like, you know, first part, you're going to see that the new, uh, the, uh, the centrosome, it is going to split. Okay, and it is going to give rise to your centrioles. Let, let, let me just come out over here. Okay, so in this case, what had we said? Oh, the centrioles have split, and you know the centrosome has split, and it is converted into centrioles. The centrioles are trying to move towards the opposite poles, but still they're going to be held together with the help of spindle fiber. Okay, in the next case, what did we say that oh, the chromatin fiber it is going to condense, and now it is going to give rise to this X-shaped chromosomes. This is what is going to happen, right? And then after that, we said, guys, in the next case, the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus, they are going to disappear. In the last case, we have said that in the centrioles, they are going to reach the opposite poles. But now the nuclear membrane has disappeared. The nucleolus has disappeared. The chromosomes have attached to the spindle fibers. But how are they being attached? 
they are attached randomly meaning there is no specific pattern there is no specific way in which these are being attached yes absolutely absolutely right okay so that is going to be the first thing okay but now guys i have told you that okay in the second case that is here the chromatin fiber had condensed to give rise to your chromosomes right how does this thing really really happen okay so let me just give you a little bit of idea okay so now initially what are we going to say guys we are going to see that oh we have our entire chromatin fiber something like this okay but what did i tell you ultimately at the end how are we going to see oh we are going to see it to be like highly condensed and in this x shaped form so from this highly expanded and loosened form i have converted into highly condensed and x shaped form how does this thing happen so let's try to see so for the packaging of this thing for the conversion of chromatin fiber from this stage to this stage we require those histone proteins okay so remember histone as well as non histone proteins so what happens is this chromatin fiber first now this is going to come and it is going to wound around an octamer of histones okay octamer of histones okay let's try to understand what happens so guys we are going to have these histone proteins now how are these histone proteins they are going to be in groups of eight now see i am showing four but i am telling you it is going to be groups of eight how come four molecules on the front side four molecules on the back side same way we are going to have four molecules out over here on the front side four molecules on the back side now what happens guys okay now at this time your dna this is going to come and this is going to wound around this thing okay so it comes and it wounds around this thing one and three four times okay so it wounds around this one and three four times and this process it keeps on repeating over and over and over again so what happens is slowly slowly you start seeing that oh this chromatin fiber this dna it is being wounded against this you know uh, these histone proteins okay so i'll just mention this is nothing but it is octamer of histones okay can anybody from last year remember like you know those were from icsc those were my kids okay do you still remember like you know what do we call this thing guys when the dna is wound around the nucleosome one and three four turns this is going to give rise to a structure very nice very nice rishik very nice dia very nice okay what is this this is nothing but guys this entire structure we call this thing as your nucleosome this is known as a nucleosome okay very nice very nice okay guys but this nucleosome when we look at it in a microscope okay this whatever i am showing you this is a highly magnified image extremely extremely magnified image but when we look at it into a microscope guys how does this thing appear you are going to see that oh it appears to be like a small string on which there are going to be beads 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 like this like how we have japmal right exactly like that so this kind of a structure is called as beads on a string structure in the next case guys what is going to happen this is going to fold over itself meaning one by two so you will see that oh this is going to fold over itself and it is now going to appear something like this and we are going to have our the octamer of histones 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 out over here now guys so later on this is going to fold over itself again and this process it keeps on continuing 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 until we first get chromatin fiber and after your chromatin fiber guys that chromatin fiber will further undergo condensation to ultimately give rise to your x shaped chromosome so it is that way so let's imagine this is your the chromatin fiber okay so even what you see actually that you know we have the chromatin fiber that chromatin fiber see in your cell how is this going to appear this is your chromatin fiber in your cell you are going to see that oh this is the one which appears like thin thread like structure so from your dna being like this to your x shaped chromosome it has to undergo lots and lots of packaging 
and that packaging is going to be helped with the, the help of this histone proteins that is what is going to happen but now guys we are talking about chromosomes okay and i've shown you oh this is your x shaped chromosome wait this is our x shaped chromosome but guys is this a real chromosome as such okay let's try to understand now always remember guys and guys please pay attention okay because whatever we are going to do ahead it is going to be all based only on this thing okay understand this guys this x shaped chromosome that we have out over here this is not a single chromosome this is actually we call it as a duplicated chromosome hi what is this duplicated chromosome let's try to understand guys whenever we talk about a single chromosome a single chromosome guys it is going to be this way a single chromosome is like this and now what happens is right in the center you are going to have a little bulged portion what is this bulged portion guys this bulged portion is called as centromere this is known as centromere and now just besides the centromere guys you are going to see that oh there are going to be two plate like structures these two plate like structures guys we call them as kinetochores okay this is known as kinetochores guys always remember for one chromosome okay you are going to have two kinetochores and guys when we talk about your uh, like attachment to of spindle fibers okay where is this thing really going to happen here so you are going to see that the centromere so we have said the centromere is going to attach but now this centromere actually is going to be attached through the kinetochore so this is how it is going to really look like guys this is a single chromosome understand this thing guys this is a single chromosome and now we are going to see duplicated chromosome now how is the duplicated chromosome guys you are going to see that oh one part is like this okay and the other part it is going to be like this okay now let me just show you see uh, initially your chromosome was like this so let's say this one okay this one let's imagine this is your original one okay i am just showing it a little crooked Okay, that's it. This is the original one, guys. And the right hand side, this is going to be the exact copy of it. Okay, so this is. Let me just say, this is your chromosome, the original chromosome, and this is going to be the copy of the same chromosome. It is copy of the same chromosome. And how are they going to be held, guys? They are going to be held together right at the center out over here. they are going to be held right at the center with the help of your centromere okay so this is how it is going to work so guys if i draw a line like this okay if i draw a line like this guys what are we going to see we are going to see that oh this left hand side this is going to be same as your right hand side right because ultimately they are going to be the same part the same chromosome left one is the original and the right one is going to be a copy of it because we see it this way guys because they are going to be same what do we call this thing we call both these arms as sister chromatids we call both these arms as sister chromatids of one another okay everybody getting this thing okay now let me just give you another name okay guys once again please please pay attention okay see guys see this single chromosome has only one chromosome inside of it so this kind of a chromosome we call this thing as monad chromosome okay this is monad mona means one or mono means one so monad chromosome this thing how many copies it is going to have basically it has two copies of the same chromosome guys right this kind of a chromosome we call this thing as dyad chromosome so we have monad chromosome and we have dyad chromosome 
okay everybody all right with this thing getting this part guys okay so this is how your chromosomes are going to be and guys what you need to remember okay always remember this thing guys you always need to remember are what happened something is guys can you see the screen sure yeah okay 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 so now what happens guys is you are going to see okay at this funda they will always ask you in your neat exams also they will always ask you in your uh, like you know in your boards also uh, like you know in, in your 11 standard exams also the entire funda of mitosis okay understand entire funda of mitosis lies on this thing only if you understand that this is one chromosome but it is actually having two copies of it guys you have mastered mitosis why am i telling you because in anaphase we are going to require this information only okay in anaphase we'll require it okay but let's try to go read there out over there okay let's try to reach out over there okay but now let's try to see guys once again this was how the cell was going to look one moment what is a nucleosome a nucleosome is when the dna so this is the dna this dna it comes and it is just going to wound around like you know it is going to just rotate around or revolve around that octamer of histones octamer of histones is how you know you are going to see this see this is going to be four molecules and now let's say i'm showing you other four molecules out over here at the back like this Okay, so total eight molecules. So your DNA is going to come, and that DNA is now going to wound around this thing, like this. So then this structure it is called as your histone. Okay, now for the time being you don't have the histones and all in detail. You are going to see it in your twelfth uh, standard. Okay, so in this thing also like you know we have H one, H two A, H two B, H three, H four. Okay, in this. and on this thing that is your linker dna or the spacer dna we are going to have h1 okay but i'm not giving you that information right now because uh, next year i mean next year when we talk about your genes gene uh, uh, genes that part at that time you will have it okay so at that time we will start talking about how it is going to look like what is really going to happen okay but now guys let's try to see we are going to have prophase okay so by the end of prophase guys we were something of this sort okay so this is all it happened see guys in your prophase there were so many changes taking place from year to year and because there were so many changes taking place guys what did we say prophase is the largest phase it is the longest phase of your mitosis okay but now guys let's try to move ahead so from your prophase now we are going to go into metaphase but guys the moment we are into metaphase what do i mean meta meaning middle middle phase so something is going to happen in the middle of the cell so guys you are going to see that oh our cell it is going to be like this the cell membrane is as it is now the nuclei uh olus has disappeared the nuclear membrane has disappeared as it is like you know in your adjusting uh the prophase the centrioles they were reaching the opposite poles so they were also like this we have also said that oh you are also going to have guys you are going to see that oh the spindle fibers are going to be there now i have told you guys that the spindle fibers there are different types of spindle fibers i am going to show it to you in your anaphase Okay, what are these different types of spindle fibers? For the time being, I am showing you only those spindle fibers which have, which have uh, this thing, uh, which are going to be attached to your uh, chromosomes. Okay, I am not showing the ones which are not there. Uh, I mean, which are not having any kind of your chromosomes, or you know, which are just moving from one central to the other central. I am not showing those. But in the next case, I will show. I will show them. Okay, fine. Chalo, let's try to see that thing. 
Okay. So guys, now what happens is in your meta phase, you are going to see that these chromosomes, okay, these X-shaped chromosomes, which were there in the first case, they were like, you know, uh, arranged randomly. Now, in the next case, you are going to see that here, there is going to be a little bit of pulling and all of the spindle fibers. Okay, the spindle fibers is going to pull and slowly you will see that now these chromosomes, they are going to come right into the center of the cell like this. And how are they going to be arranged, guys? They are going to be arranged on an equatorial plane. So they will be arranged in this straight manner, right? Straight manner, something like this. And this is the characteristic of your metaphase. Now, guys, how long is this thing going to last for? This is going to last for around two to 10 minutes only. It is a little smaller phase only, guys. But now it is not the shortest phase. Shortest phase is your anaphase. Okay, this is going to last for two to 10 minutes. And then at the same time, guys, what is the characteristic here? Most important characteristic that the chromosomes, they are arranged on an equatorial plane. Okay, your uh, this thing, they are going to be arranged on an equatorial plane. Another important point, guys, we need to remember. In this case, you are going to see that the condensation of chromosomes is complete. The condensation of the chromosomes is complete and attachment, okay, and attachment of chromosomes to the spindle fibers is also complete. Okay, attachment of chromosome to spindle fiber, both of these things, they are going to be complete. This is very, very important thing. Okay. And now guys, if given a chance, if given a chance that, you know, you have to see the chromosomes in a cell, this is the best phase for looking at chromosomes because the chromosomes are going to be very, very distinct. They can be easily seen and they can be easily counted as well. So always remember this thing that here, the chromosomes are always going to be best seen chromosomes are always best seen in your metaphase okay that's it that is what we need to know with regards to your metaphase guys okay fine but now once again i told you guys there are going to be some other uh, you know the uh, the fibers that are going to come up out over here Right. So I'm going to talk about those fibers as well. So let me just first tell you what are the fibers that we are going to see out over here. Okay. So now let me just um, copy this thing only. Okay. So guys, when we talk about this meta phase, what are we going to see? See, I told you there are going to be two types of your fibers. One, which are going to have these chromosomes attached to them and let me draw these other ones which are going to be like from one centriole to the other centriole there are no chromosomes attached to them guys okay so understand this thing see there are no chromosomes attached to them okay something of this sort so what are these kinds of fibers called okay fine so first thing, guys, the ones which do not have, the ones which do not have any kind of your uh, chromosomes attached, these are called as your interpolar fibers. They are known as interpolar fibers. Now, why interpolar? Because they are running from one pole to the other pole. See, from one pole to the other pole. So yes, that is why they are going to be interpolar fibers. And the second one, guys, these ones, which are going to contain the chromosomes, these are called as your chromosomal fibers. Interpolar fibers and second one, we are going to have chromosomal fibers, guys. Okay, so these out over here in your metaphase, you are going to see only these. And when these two come, okay, these two or both of them, they are known as mitotic apparatus. 
both these fibers they are now going to give rise to something that we call as mitotic apparatus okay so very very important from your knee point of view guys okay so they will ask you who forms the mitotic apparatus that's it this is what we need to know with regards to metaphase guys so just have a look see if you are okay with this guys and then we'll move on to anaphase just see if anybody is having any doubts anything you wish to ask what is the function of interpolar fibers there is no function as such they are just going to connect one pole to the other pole that's it Okay, everybody all right with this, guys? Everyone okay with this? Is there any specific uh, number of for this fiber? No, 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 no specific number. It is all random, all random. Okay, Chala. I hope everybody is okay with this. So guys, the next phase, okay, so from your meta phase, now we're going to move on to your anaphase. See, I told you anaphase, it is going to be the shortest phase. Okay, so now let's try to see what is going to happen. Okay, and guys, once again, I want you to pay full attention out over here because this is the most important phase of your mitosis. Okay, so now we had meta phase something like this. Now, from your metaphase, guys, we are going to go into anaphase. I told you anaphase, this is going to be the smallest phase ever. Okay, now let's try to see what is going to happen. Okay, so let me just first put down, this is the shortest phase. And why is this shortest phase, guys? Because this is going to last approximately two to three minutes only approximately two to three minutes. Okay, so let's see what are the changes that you're going to see. So the first thing that you're going to see guys is you are going to see that oh, in this cell membrane, suddenly you are going to see a small furrow coming up. Okay, so you are going to see that oh, a small furrow develops out over here. Okay, so first thing is this, the furrow develops okay but now the second thing that is going to happen guys is the centromere the centromere which was holding the two sister chromatids together that is going to split okay so now let's try to see see guys we have a situation like this okay once again i am going to show you only the chromosomal fibers guys if i start showing the interpolar fibers then it is going to be a little uh, you know, too shabby. It is going to be a little full gitch media types. So I will try to avoid, I will show it to you, the other fibers in your other diagram. Okay. So now let's try to see guys what happened. See, we started off with four chromosomes. Okay. So once again, guys, see, you are going to have a situation like this. So now what has happened, guys? See, we have the chromosome, which was like this. And both the chromosomes, meaning basically the sister chromatids they were held together right at the center what was that center that center was nothing but your centromere now what is going to happen guys here the centromere is going to split like this straight top 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 now what is going to happen you are going to see guys now because the centromere has split you will see that now the two sister chromatids they are going to be separated and now these two sister chromatids guys 
they are going to be pulled towards the opposite end mm -mm -mm. now you may say oh sir but then you have drawn the sister chromatids ulta because if this should split okay if this splits then one chromosome that one sister chromatid it should be pulled like this but are you have shown it ulta like this how is that possible the reason is guys see where is the spindle fiber being attached the spindle fiber was attached to the centromere right so when the spindle fiber is contracting guys are you going to pull the sides of this thing no you are going to pull the central part of it like this and if you're pulling the central part out over there what will happen immediately you are going to see that oh the centromere is going to come to the sides and now the drag is going to pull these things behind like this so see you will see this moving forward first and then later on these arms are going to move like that way and that is why you, instead of seeing it this way you will see the chromosomes moving this way guys okay always keep this in mind very 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 important okay very important Okay, and now once again, let me just see. Okay, so once again, what we are going to see, guys, we are going to see that instead of this, we are going to have a look at this. Okay, and same way on the other side also, you are going to see it this way. They are all going to be attached by your spindle fibers. And then they start moving like this and like this. Okay, everybody all right? Fine. Okay, now here, okay, here you are going to see the third type of fiber coming. See guys, what we were saying, this was your chromosomal fiber because it was attached to your... Yes, 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 right, 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 absolutely. This was going to be your chromosomal fiber. But now after the centromere split, guys, see this new patch, this new patch of your spindle fiber has come out this thing what is this new patch called this new patch is nothing but this is interchromosomal fibers or interzonal fibers interchromosomal fibers Or we also call them as interzonal fibers, interchromosomal or interzonal fibers. This is how it is going to be, guys. Okay, everybody getting the hang of this thing? Sure. So, guys, in your uh, this thing, in your anaphase, how many different types of uh, the spindle fibers are you going to observe? Yes, guys, can you give me an idea? Very nice. Zui has given me the right answer. Avishkar has also given me the right answer. Yes, waiting for the others. Waiting for the others, guys. Yes, Vaishnavi is also right. Remember, in your anaphase, guys, you are going to see three types of fibers. See, here you are going to have the interpolar fibers that is going to be there. You are going to see chromosomal fibers that is also going to be there. And your third the new one that is going to come up, that is your interzonal or your interchromosomal fibers. So three fibers are going to come. Okay, guys, fine. Now let's try to see. Okay, now the same thing is going to happen with the second chromosome also. So it is going to also appear like this. Okay, so the centromere has split. Okay, and the sister chromatids, they are separated. And they are moving now towards the opposite poles, guys. So you are going to have a situation like this. Okay, so you are going to have a situation, something of this sort. Okay, so let me just once again put down. So what is going to happen here? The furrow develops. This is going to be one development. And second thing we are going to see that the centromere splits. Okay. 
Okay. Isn't the uh, interchromosomal fiber a part of the chromosomal fiber? No. Why? Because see, who was the original chromosomal fiber? This one. See, this one was the original chromosomal fiber. This one was the original. This green one, it has come later on. Because why? The centrioles, the centromere had split. And the centromere had split. And both sister chromatids, they were moving apart. And that was a new development. This is a new development which has come up. This was not there earlier. And that is why we have a specific name for it. It is interchromosomal or interzonal fiber. Okay. All right with this. Do these interzonal fibers have any function? Yes, yes, yes. Slowly, 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 I'm going to tell you. Slowly, I will tell you. Okay. Now, first thing. Guys, okay, first part of anaphase. Have you guys understood what has happened out over here? First, you are going to see that, yes, you are going to see that the furrow has developed. And second, it is going to be the centromere. Hmm, hmm, right, right. The centromere has split and the, the two sister chromatids, they are moving towards the opposite poles. Yes, this is right. Okay, so this is what is going to happen. Okay, now guys, what is happening? Now, see, in the next case, what is going to happen? Okay, let's try to see what will happen after a little while. Okay, towards the end of the anaphase. Okay, now you are going to see that now the furrow is still there, something like this. You are going to see that the centrioles, they are still going to be out over here towards the opposite ends. Okay, they are going to be as it is, like this. Okay, now the spindle fibers, they are also going to be there. So you are going to have the spindle fibers. So one, two, three, and four. Now guys, once again, what are these spindle fibers? These spindle fibers, they are chromosomal fibers that we are showing. Okay, by the end of your anaphase, guys, what is going to happen? The poles, they are going to pull that entire chromat uh, the sister chromatid towards itself. So you will see at the end of anaphase, all the four sister chromatids, they will be on one side and another four sister chromatids, they will be on the other side. Like this. Okay, so this is how the situation is going to appear, guys, by the end. Okay, now how did this thing really happen? Like what was exactly happening out over here? So let's try to see this situation. Guys, now what happens is, now let me just pull this thing a little down. So then you will understand what is the importance of this thing. See, earlier we had a situation like this. We had the chromosomal fibers at the sides, we had the interzonal fibers or the interchromosomal fiber in the center. Now, how will this thing move from here to here? The answer is the chromosomal fibers, guys, the chromosomal fibers, they condense. These condense. The chromosomal fiber condenses. And if the chromosomal fibers condense, anything that is going to attach to them will be pulled like this towards the sides. Right? So same way for here also, it is going to condense. Okay? So it is going to be pulled towards the sides. So the chromosomal fiber condenses and the interchromosomal fiber or the interzonal fiber, this relaxes or this expands this expands or it relaxes as a result what is this going to do this is going to push it towards the sides this is going to push it towards the sides and now the chromosomal fibers this is going to pull it towards the sides eventually what is the end result slowly 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 you are going to see that now the sister chromatids they are going to reach the opposite poles this is what is going to happen, guys. Everybody understood what is the importance of the chromosomal fiber and your interchromosomal fiber? Yes? Okay. 
ओके 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 फाइन ओके सो गाइस नाउ बाय द एंड ऑफ योर दिस थिंग बाय द एंड ऑफ योर एनाफेज यू आर गोइंग टू सी दिस एज द सिचुएशन बट नाउ माय क्वेश्चन टू यू गाइस ओके एंड लेट्स सी यू नो इफ यू हैव अंडरस्टूड ओके व्हाटएवर वी हैव स्पोकन ऑफ See, guys, when we started off, how many chromosomes did we start off? Guys, quickly chat and answer. How many chromosomes? Yes, yes, yes. We started off with four chromosomes out over here. Okay, but now, guys, let's try to see. See what happened in that anaphase. The same four chromosomes. Yeah, catch it. They were divided into half. Right? They divided into half. Later on, what is going to happen, guys? See, by the end of anaphase. Four sister chromatids they reached out over here. Four sister chromatids they reached out over here. Later on, what is going to happen, guys? This thing is going to give rise to one new cell. This thing is going to give rise to one new cell. Now, please, please, please understand. Okay, if this left hand side is going to convert into one new cell, right hand side is going to convert into one new cell, guys. Can you tell me each side? Each side, this side is going to receive how many chromosomes, and this side is going to receive how many chromosomes? Yes, yes. So Kanaka is right, Dia is right, Darshanita is right, Iruvi is right, Tanishka is right. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, once again, guys, always remember, always remember what is the funda. See, I told you. Okay, now let me just. Okay, so see how many chromosomes are going to reach on each side. On each side, you are going to receive four and four chromosomes each. How come? Because this one single, you know, that sister chromatid. This is nothing but it is your single chromosome. Guys, this is nothing but single chromosome. What did we say? We had said that your X-shaped chromosome is nothing but it is duplicated chromosome. So let's say if this is chromosome one, this is also chromosome one. So when this thing splits, when this thing splits, what will happen? You are going to see that oh, this one sister chromatid is reaching out over here. The other sister chromatid is going to be reaching out over here, right? But ultimately, what is this? This is nothing but chromosome number one. This is also chromosome number one. So same way, you have see chromosome number one, chromosome number two, chromosome number three, chromosome number four, chromosome number one, chromosome number two, chromosome number three, chromosome number four. And that is why, guys, even if even if you are saying that the one single X-shaped chromosome is split, and still You know, half part is reaching each side. Still, the cell receives complete number of chromosomes because each one half is nothing but a single chromosome. If you have understood this, guys, then you have mastered mitosis. There is nothing to worry after this, guys. Everybody okay with this? Has everybody understood what has happened out over here? So the chromosome number, uh, so the forty-six chromosome duplicate to ninety-two chromosome four and wrong, wrong. Your chromosome number will never change. What does it mean? Like you know, if for the time being, like you know, when you have forty-six chromosomes, your forty-six chromosome number meaning you are human, and then suddenly in the next case, at the time of cell division, you get ninety-two chromosome. That means suddenly you turn out to be alien, and then once again you come back to humans. No, that is not going to happen. What do we say? We are going to say that oh, forty-six chromosomes, those are duplicated. So at this time of cell division, you are your chromosome number is forty-six only. The chromosome number doesn't increase to uh, your ninety-two. Uh, What I will say is that these forty-six chromosomes they are duplicated chromosomes. Meaning, let's say if you have one x amount of DNA, then after duplication, when is duplication going to take place in your S phase? Your DNA content is going to be 
to x and that is why we have said that s phase the amount of dna is going to be duplicated the amount of dna increases the number of chromosomes are duplicated but still yes uh, sir does it mean that one duplicated chromosome contain two chromosomes yes absolutely it contains two chromosomes but these are those are copies of the same chromosome meaning one is going to be original another one is going to be its copy only it is chromosome number 1 only but two copies you can say it is having two copies of the same chromosome okay and that is why the chromosome number will remain the same what we can always say that oh your dna content has doubled okay your chromosome number never changes from 46 to 92 Okay, has everybody understood this thing, guys? Sure. Yes. Okay. 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 So remember this, guys. This is the most important thing. That is your anaphase. After your anaphase, guys, everything is like really, really simple. There is nothing because in the next phase, now what is going to happen? Whatever changes that had taken place in your prophase, those are going to be reversed in your at the telophase okay so let's try to see your telophase guys what is going to happen okay so this is going to be the last phase guys okay telophase okay now how is this now guys this is going to last somewhere less than 50 minutes Now, actually, you know, it is more or less fifty minutes. But we have already said that prophase is going to be like you know a little greater than fifty minutes, right? So this has to be a little less. Otherwise, you know, telophase would have been like the largest phase. Okay. Now, in one simple word, in one simple line, how can I state what is telophase? See, I told you whatever changes that are taking place in your prophase, those are all going to be reversed out over here. so guys when we talk about this we will just say telophase is nothing but this is reversal of prophase in one simple sentence it is nothing but reversal of prophase whatever whatever uh, uh, the changes that had taken place those are going to be reversed once again and another important thing that we will observe that the furrow which was there the furrow deepens a bit okay chalo so now let's try to see see guys at the end of anaphase we were having a situation like this but now by the end of anaphase and now by the end of telophase what are we going to see let's try to figure this thing okay so we are going to see that you know in your telophase okay the furrow has deepened a little bit okay so the furrow has deepened okay but now see what was the earlier change in prophase the nuclear membrane disappears the nucleolus disappears the centrosome splits to give rise to centrioles right all these changes are going to be reversed again okay so see once again you are going to see that now what is going to happen the nuclear membrane is going to reappear See, the nuclear membrane reappears the nucleolus this reappears the nuclear membrane reappears the nucleolus reappears now what is going to happen guys see earlier we had chromatin fiber see in your this thing see we had said we had chromatin fiber and that had condensed to give rise to your x shaped chromosome here you are going to see that now the chromatin fibers okay that the chromosomes they are going to decondense and now they are once again going to give rise to your chromatin fiber so they decondense and they give rise to chromatin fiber at the same time the centrioles they are going to get duplicated and they are now going to give rise to your centrosome and the centrosome is going to appear something like this that's it and that is what we need to know with regards to your 
telophase okay so very very simple very very straightforward guys very very simple and very straightforward okay but guys this is where this is where our mitosis is going to end meaning your karyokinesis is going to end but now after your karyokinesis what are we going to have we are going to have cytokinesis so guys let's try to see what is going to happen in cytokinesis okay so in the next case guys we are going to see exactly the same thing that is going to happen okay so let me just quickly pull this thing okay now what did we say what is cytokinesis cytokinesis is nothing but it is division of the cytoplasm so you are going to see that the furrow which was developed it is going to start developing even more further okay it just starts deepening further like this like this okay and now as it is deepening further okay let me just Okay, so you are going to see that in the next case, the same thing is going to happen that the furrow is now going to deepen even bit further. And as the furrow is deepening even bit further, we are going to see that, oh, slowly, slowly, now you will see that, oh, the two cells, they are going to start separating. Ultimately, in the next case, what are you going to see? You are going to see that, oh, this is completely completely like this okay and now at this moment you are going to see that there is only a small narrow bridge of cytoplasm connecting the two cells in the next case the same site of the same bridge of cytoplasm that is going to snap off and from one single cell guys how many cells are we going to get we are going to get two new daughter cells and that is nothing but your mitosis this is going to mark the complete end of mitosis guys okay so i hope everybody has understood what has happened out over here okay once again just have a look guys if everybody is okay say this way Okay, so this is what has happened, guys. Ultimately, from one single cell, we are going to have two new cells. Okay, where are the cell organelles formed? The cell organelles are formed in the cytoplasm only. Okay, so what happens is, and at the time of this cell division, now here, you know, when the cell organelles are going to be distributed, it is going to be all randomly. It is not going to be like two purchase mitochondria, le, may purchase mitochondria lunga. two uh, bara plastids, le, may bara plastid lunga. No, it is not that way. The cytoplasm is just going to start, you know, dividing out over here. Whoever is present on the left side will go on to the one cell, left cell. Whoever is present on the right side will go on to the right cell. It is that way. Okay, they are going to be formed in the cytoplasm. Once again, guys, what is cytokinesis? Cytokinesis is nothing but this is division of cytoplasm. That's it. That is what we need to know with regards to your entire mitosis. Okay, so guys, once again, let me just quickly run you through mitosis. What has happened? Okay, guys, quickly just see if you are okay. And then we can move ahead with the next part. That is how it is going to happen in your plant cell. Okay, because there are going to be a little differences in your animal cell mitosis and plant cell mitosis. Okay, so see guys, here we had your interface cell this is how a non-dividing cell is going to look like okay but now when it decides to undergo your mitosis so first thing it is going to enter into karyokinesis and after karyokinesis into cytokinesis after entering cytokinesis and completing cytokinesis one cell is going to give rise to two cells
Okay, just have a look at it, guys. Just read this thing if you are okay. Sir, in cytokinesis, the remaining uh, organelles are formed in the cytoplasm. No, 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 no. In cytokinesis, you're not going to form the cell organelles. When will the cell organelles be formed? Either in your G1 phase or in your G2 phase. They will not be formed during your mitosis. Okay, so guys, just see if you are okay, understood. Yes, some of them. Yes, absolutely right. Golgi apparatus, Golgi complex and ER, they are formed in the telophase. Yes, that is also right. Okay, uh, because most of them, see, most of them, like, you know, we are talking about your mitochondria. We are talking about your plastids. Okay, these are some of the main important ones. Okay, main important ones. Those will be formed in your G1 and the G2 phase. Everything else is not going to be like, you know, all the cell organelles are not going to form out over there. Mainly, mainly everything is going to be formed in G1 and G2 only. The rest, little bit of stuff will be formed here and there in your S phase. So if you look at your, uh, this thing, if, if you look at your S phase also, the centrioles, okay, the centrioles, they have said, uh, the centrioles are also formed in your S phase. So that way. But then majority, majority is going to happen in your G1 and G2 phase only. Can you repeat the three fibers formed? Yes, we have three fibers. One, okay, who are going to give who are going to give rise to your mitotic apparatus? One, see, first one, we have interpolar fibers. These are the ones which are going to run from one pole to the other pole. Second one, we have chromosomal fibers. These are the ones which are going to have the uh, the chromosomes attached to them. Okay, and the third one, those are going to appear in your anaphase where you are going to see that one centromere and other centromere, they are going to be attached. And that spindle fiber is your interzonal or interchromosomal fiber. Uh, can you please tell the function of aster? Aster is the one which is ultimately going to give rise to your spindle fiber. Okay. Okay, so guys, just have a look. So for after your um, prophase, prophase, remember we had, okay, I will just take this. Okay. Okay, prophase, uh, the chromosomes were arranged in a random manner. In metaphase, the chromosomes, they have been now pulled towards the center in one horizontal line or kind of thing out over here. Okay, this is nothing but they are arranged on an equatorial plane. Okay, in the next case, we are going to see your anaphase where the chromosomes, they are going to be separated and the two sister chromatids, they are going to start moving towards the opposite poles. In your exams, they will always ask you what is telophase in one simple sentence. Okay, it is nothing but the reversal of yes, prophase. All right.
Okay, so that is it, guys. This is what we need to know with regards to your entire uh, this thing. Okay, with regards to your animal cell mitosis. Okay, but now quickly, what we are going to do is we are going to move on to your plant cell mitosis, and let's try to see how is it going to happen in plants. Because see, there are a little bit of differences in plant cell. Okay, first thing. You're not going to see any kind of your centrosome. So centros, uh, the centrosome is going to be missing. So there are going to be no centrioles, no centrioles, no asters. So all these things, they are going to be missing out over there. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. So let's try to see a little bit of plant cell mitosis. Okay, so let's assume this is your normal plant cell, okay, which is undergoing your cell division. Okay, so this is your interface cell for the time being. Okay, so once again, what are we going to have? We are going to see the nucleus is present out over there, the nucleolus is as it is out over there, and then we are going to have your chromatin fiber. So this is how it is going to look like, okay, initially. Okay, now this is, I'll just mention, this is nothing but this is your interface cell. Okay, now what is going to happen, guys? You are going to see that, oh, the moment it enters into your prophase, now, immediately you are going to see certain changes taking place. So what are the changes? Now, see, guys, here you are not going to see the centrosome. So here the centrosome doesn't split. Rather than that, who is the one who's going to control this uh, entire cell division? That is done by your nucleus. Guys, here, because the centrosome is going to be missing, here the job is done by your nucleus. The nucleus is going to give commands that, oh, now the cell has to undergo cell division. Okay, fine. But now in the next case, guys, in the next case, what are we going to see? We are going to see now the... nuclear membrane is as it is the nucleolus is going to be as it is but now you are going to see that oh the chromatin fiber is now going to condense and it is going to convert into your x-shaped chromosomes okay this is first thing now guys i'm showing you only two x-shaped chromosomes okay two chromosomes only okay fine but now in the next case guys in the next case proof is what is going to happen okay you are once again going to have the same thing now the nuclear membrane is going to start disappearing so nuclear membrane disappears i mean it is disappearing okay nucleolus it is going to start disappearing now what is going to happen so you are going to see that chromatin fibers okay the chromatin fibers they start uh, the sorry the uh, the spindle fibers they start arising and now they are going to arise, but how are they? They are going to be attached towards the poles. Now you will say, sir, but now asters are not present, but how are the spindle fibers going to come? The spindle fibers are going to arise from the cytoskeleton. In your cell, in the cytoplasm, we have something called a cytoskeleton, which contains some fibers. Okay, It contains this spindle fibers or the tubulin fibers. They are now going to you know, come up together and ultimately they are going to give rise to your spindle fibers. So always keep this thing in mind, guys. Even if, even if your asters are not present, still spindle fibers are going to come into existence okay and now okay so these two chromosomes they are going to be rapidly i mean they are going to be randomly moving here and there okay in the next case guys what is going to happen in the next case we are going to see that oh Okay, in the next case, you are going to see that the nuclear membrane has completely disappeared. The nucleolus has disappeared. The spindle fibers, they are going to be attached to the opposite poles like this. Okay, something of this sort. Okay, however, there is no centriole at the end. Okay, guys, keep this thing in mind. Okay, sometimes what happens, they ask you to draw this thing. Okay, and especially uh, the examiners will want to trick you. 
by asking you to draw this thing suddenly you will start drawing animal cell mitosis okay so that is going to be wrong keep your eyes open okay but now what is going to happen guys here the chromosomes they are going to attach but they are going to attach randomly okay so in any manner this is what is going to happen at the end of prophase okay but now after your prophase we are going to have metaphase once again what is going to happen the chromosomes they are going to be arranged on an equatorial plane so you are going to see that oh in the next case you are going to see that okay the spindle fibers are present they are like this okay but now the chromosomes where have they come the chromosomes have come right in the center right in the center they are going to be arranged on an equatorial plane so let's say this is that equatorial plane okay that's it that is what is going to happen in metaphase after your metaphase we are going to have the shortest phase that is anaphase so let's try to see okay now in your anaphase now see guys in the case of your animal cell what was happening in anaphase in your anaphase there was a furrow which was developing here is there going to be any furrow coming up no there is no furrow but then yes the centromere is going to split no matter what the centromere is going to split so let me just show you okay so we have this spindle fiber the spindle fibers they are going to be like this Okay, so now you are going to see that the centromere is going to split and because the centromere splits and now what is going to happen guys see you are going to see that the sister chromatids they are going to separate out and because they are going to separate out now they start moving towards the opposite poles. How come? Once again because your the interpolar fiber uh, because the chromosomal fibers that is going to start condensing and the interzonal fibers they start relaxing or expanding so once again the situation is like this okay by the end of anaphase guys what are we going to see by the end we are going to have Okay, we are going to see that by the end, you are going to have a situation like this. Okay, now my question to you, okay, now once again, at the end, what is going to happen, guys, this is going to divide like this, left hand side is going to convert into one cell, right hand side is going to convert into one cell. My question to you once again, guys, if that is the thing, how many chromosomes have reached the opposite poles? yes very nice very nice everybody very nice very nice we are going to see that two two chromosomes have reached the opposite poles right and now guys after your anaphase we have our telophase uh sir during anaphase do the interpolar fibers condense as well or do they remain intact no 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 the interpolar fibers during your anaphase see interpolar fibers they are going to remain as it is. There is going to be no change. Why? Because they are not doing anything. They are neither contracting, they are not relaxing, they are not helping in movement of your chromosomes, nothing at all. They are just out over there. Okay, now guys, let's try to see telophase. Now, this is going to be a little different. And guys, please, okay, pay attention. See, once again, what have we said? Telophase is nothing, but it is going to be. Sir, so interpolar fibers are present in plant cells? Yes, yes, they are present in both animal as well as plant cells. Everyone. Basically, it is a characteristic of eukaryotic organisms. Okay, so guys, once again, what did we say telophase? Telophase is going to be a reversal of your prophase. So once again, what are we going to see? Yes, we are going to see the nuclear membrane. It reappears. 
the nucleolus it reappears the chromatin fiber this is going to decondense meaning basically see we had chromosomes the chromosomes they are going to decondense and this is going to give rise to your a chromatin fiber okay and then ultimately now guys listen to this now you will see that oh slowly 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 now a cell wall kind of a thing starts appearing in the center of the cell okay now what is this we call this thing as phragmoplast okay this is actually termed as phragmoplast okay but now what happens is guys slowly slowly this you know this is actually your initial cell wall which is being made okay after some time this is going to harden and then slowly slowly see this is going to move towards the opposite sides if you look at the furrow the furrow was moving towards the center that is called as centripetal okay that is going to be known as centripetal and this when it is like you know moving towards the outer periphery then this is called as centrifugal okay we will be using these terms a little later but guys this is how your uh mitosis in your plant cell really looks like and after this we are going to go for your cytokinesis but then i will show you cytokinesis what really happens okay but before that guys just see if you are okay if everybody has understood this thing when we talk about the cell plate how is the cell plate formed the cell plate is formed in your centrifugal manner see when we have something it starts from the center and it moves towards the sides in towards the circumference then this is called as centrifugal meaning you are moving away from the center and if by any chance you are moving towards the center if you are moving like this then this is called as centripetal meaning towards the center of the circle so these are these two terms centrifugal and centripetal okay just see if you guys everybody is okay then we can move ahead with the next part sir is this uh, phragmoplast same as the middle lamella no middle lamella will be a little later phragmoplast is the initial one then you will slowly see the middle lamella coming up we will talk about that okay so everybody okay with this fine chalo now let's try to see some differences between plant cell uh, uh, cytokinesis and animal cell cytokinesis what really happens okay so let's try to see it okay so now in your animal cell cytokinesis what did we say that oh you are going to see that oh a furrow is going to develop okay meaning the furrow had developed and the furrow it keeps on deepening deepening now how does this furrow keep on deepening like what really is happening out over there so what we see is where we have this furrow you are going to see that oh suddenly there is a ring or a rubber band kind of a thing appears and this rubber band kind of a thing this is nothing but it is made up of actin and myosin 
Okay, actin and myosin, these are nothing but your muscle fibers. So something of this sort. So you're going to see actin and myosin. And now this rubber band kind of thing, this keeps on deepening, meaning it keeps on contracting, contracting, contracting. And as it is contracting, now what are you going to see that, oh, okay, 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 okay. Now you are going to see that slowly, slowly, now you can see that oh from the center it is like you know decreasing 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 and that is why you will see that suddenly this thing is going to snap off and then from one set you are going to get two new sets this is how it is going to happen in your animal sets okay but now in the case of your plant cell now what is going to happen Okay, see, we have already said that first, you are going to see a situation like this where you are going to see the initial thing that is coming up, that is phragmoplast. Uh, what happens to fibers after division? You're talking about spindle fibers. The spindle fibers, they are going to dissolve. See, they were made from the cytoplasm. So after their job is done, once again, they are going to dissolve and they go into the cytoplasm once again. Actin and myosin. Actin and myosin after the, uh, the cell has divided, then it is once again going to dissolve. This is all a part of your cytoskeleton only. Okay, so now guys, let's try to see what happens. Okay, okay, okay. See, what happens is we are going to get the first cell wall that is going to be formed that is in the center. This is nothing but your phragmoplast. What, where does this thing come from? This phragmoplast, it arises, arises from the vesicles of Golgi. Okay, vesicles of Golgi and your endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, this is it. Okay, now guys, the moment we have phragmoplast being formed, now what is going to happen? We are not going to stop out over there. We need to form a completely hard cell wall. So then you're going to see that the first thing that is going to happen is you will be adding pectin. Okay. So now the moment you add pectin, it is going to become more strong. The moment it becomes more strong, we are going to call this thing as middle lamella. This is nothing but your middle lamella. Now what happens, this middle lamella, this is, you know, initially this is going to be very flexible. If it is flexible, then we call this thing as your primary cell wall. Okay, so this is known as primary cell wall. Okay, but now I don't want primary cell wall. I want it to be like really, really hard. So ultimately, then afterwards, we are going to get like really, really hard cell wall. And that is nothing but your secondary cell wall. Okay, and now we are talking about cell wall, cell wall, cell wall. What are these cell walls actually made up of? So you are going to see they are either going to be made up of pectin or they are going to be having cellulose or they will have hemicellulose. Okay, this is how it is going to happen. But now guys, you know what? Once again, okay, well, let me just put down the picture. Next, Janet, I will quickly put this thing down. Guys, you know what? What is going to happen? So let's say we have formed a complete cell wall out over there. Okay, so let's say we have formed a cell wall. Everything is in place. Everything is just about to divide. Okay, so let's imagine. Okay. Now you are going to see that, oh, even after, after we form the cell wall, okay, what happens is inside the cell wall, there are still minute openings. So you will see that, oh, suddenly there are these minute openings which are present. Now, what are these minute openings which still are connecting the two cells? These kinds of things, okay, and then we have, okay, like this, like this. Okay, now what are these kinds of things called? These are called as your plasmodesmata.
Okay, and now what is this plasma desmata? This is nothing but this is connection. That's it. That is what we need to know with regards to your plant cell mitosis. Okay, so guys, in the next class, when we come back, we are going to just differentiate between what is the animal plant cell mitosis, what is plant cell mitosis, and after that, we will move ahead with your meiosis. Okay. So I hope everybody has understood this thing properly. Whatever we have done, remember, guys, the entire funda of mitosis lies in anaphase. If you have understood anaphase, then definitely there is nothing to worry. Okay, chalo. So, guys, once again, we'll stop over here for the day, and I'll see you in the next class. Till then, take care. Uh, one minute, one minute, sir. Can you explain uh, the plasma desmata part? Plasma desmata is nothing but there are going to be these small bridges. Even if we think that oh the cell wall is going to be completely rigid, there are going to be small bridges which are going to connect both both the cells. They help in exchange of your cytoplasm, help in exchange of your cell organelles. That way, that is plasma desmata. Okay, chill. So guys, we'll stop over here for the day and I'll see you in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.